Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll be comparing transmission lines with waveguides. If you observe basic structure of transmission line, then in general, there are three categories. One is two parallel wire transmission line. Second is coaxial cable transmission line. And third one is micro strip transmission line. If you observe the basic structure of transmission line, then in that we have two parallel conductors. While here we have waveguide structure. If you observe the waveguide structure, then here we have circular waveguide and here we have rectangular waveguide. This waveguide that is hollow metallic tube that one can say. So here in a structure of transmission line, we have two parallel conductors you can observe over here. Right. While in waveguide, we have hollow metallic tube. See, in transmission line, signal propagation happens based on coupling of signal between two parallel wires. While in waveguide, signal propagation happens based on total internal reflection. In this video, I'll be comparing transmission line with waveguide based on different parameters. So let us start with first parameter that is different types. See, with transmission line, in general, there are three categories. First one is two parallel wire that structure can be observed over here and this two parallel wire transmission line that we were been using in telephone network. Second type with transmission line is coaxial wire. You can observe here we have coaxial cable in which here we have inner conductor that is center conductor and this is outer conductor and these two conductors are separated by insulating material this coaxial wire that we are using in TV signals. And third category is micro strip transmission line that we fabricate on PCB. So on printed circuit board, usually we have transmission lines for a signal propagation, right? While with waveguide, there are two types, rectangular waveguide and circular waveguide. You can observe here we have hollow metallic tube that is having shape of rectangle while here we have hollow metallic tube that is having shape of circle so this is circular waveguide and this is rectangular waveguide right that is how basic structures are there now second parameter that is based on metal used see in transmission line we have two parallel wires that one can say here also you can observe we have two parallel wires in this micro strip transmission line also we have two parallel metals while in waveguide we have hollow metallic tube right so in waveguide we use more metallic material compared to transmission line now i'll be comparing this transmission line and waveguide based on modes of propagation see in transmission line we have tem mode for propagation TEM means transverse electromagnetic mode while with waveguide it only supports TE and TM modes. Let me explain first what is the meaning of TEM. If you consider direction of propagation of signal is there in Z direction. So as if signal is propagating in Z direction then with TEM mode magnitude of magnetic field in z direction and magnitude of electric field in z direction will be zero means electric field and magnetic field that will be perpendicular to the direction of propagation right so in tem mode in the direction of propagation electric field and magnetic field will be zero while in case of te mode you will be observing electric field in the direction of propagation will be zero but magnetic field that is not zero in the direction of propagation while with tm mode in the direction of propagation magnetic field will be zero while electric field in the direction of propagation is not zero and one should know with waveguide tem mode is not possible while in transmission line it supports tem mode means in the direction of propagation, you will be observing electric field and magnetic field that is zero, right? Now next parameter 
that is based on allowed frequencies. See in transmission line, all the frequencies are allowed. One can transmit signal with DC signal to microwave frequencies of signal. Here there is no limitation of operating frequency with transmission line. While with waveguide, it allows only those frequencies which are greater than cutoff frequencies. So you will have to identify cutoff frequency of given waveguide. With dominant mode, we need to identify minimum cutoff frequency and whatever signal that we transmit inside waveguide that should be having frequency above cutoff frequency, right? So waveguide operates above cutoff frequency only while with transmission line we can transmit all the possible frequencies, right? But still as you change the frequency in transmission line, impedance will change and based on change in impedance, we need to provide impedance matching network as well. But with transmission line, we don't have any boundaries with operating signals, right, in terms of frequency. Now next parameter that is based on signal propagation. See in transmission line, we have two parallel conductors. So signal is coupling between two parallel wires and based on impedance matching, signal is propagating inside transmission line. While with waveguide, signal propagates based on total internal reflection from the wall of waveguide. So in waveguide, signal is propagating based on reflection. It is based on total internal reflection, right? While in transmission line, electromagnetic waves are getting coupled in between two parallel conductor and that is getting propagated towards the load. While in waveguide, signal is propagating based on total internal reflection. Right. Now I will be discussing about next parameter that is impedance. See this impedance is very essential. You need to understand meaning of that impedance first. See with transmission line usually we talk about characteristic impedance that is Z0. And that characteristic impedance is an impedance of transmission line provided length of the transmission line is infinite. So based on characteristic impedance we should be using load value of load should be nearer to characteristic impedance then only maximum power will get transferred to the load. While in case of waveguide, we will be using term that is wave impedance. Why it is wave impedance? The reason is inside waveguide, we will be transmitting EM waves that is propagating based on total internal reflection and at load side, there has to have impedance matching and that matching will be done based on wave impedance, right? And for free space, one should know impedance value is 377 ohm, means for air, that value of wave impedance that is nearer to 377 ohm. So in waveguide, we will be discussing about impedance matching with respect to wave impedance, while in transmission line impedance will be characteristic impedance. So for impedance matching, we will be terminating load with characteristic impedance, then you can have maximum power transfer, right? Now next parameter that I'll be discussing is based on what kind of theory that we use it to analyze transmission line. See in transmission line, we will be talking about circuit theory. In transmission line, I have explained you equivalent circuit, which was having RLGC component. And based on RLGC component, we have derived equation of characteristic impedance, we have derived equation of input impedance, reflection coefficient, VSWR. So that is happening as per circuit theory in transmission line. While in case of waveguide, we are talking about field theory in which we discuss about how we have total internal reflection and how different modes are there. And based on different modes, there will be different cutoff frequencies and based on cutoff frequencies, there will be wave propagation inside waveguide. So waveguide discussion happens based on field theory while transmission line discussion that can be done based on circuit theory, right? Now next parameter that is based on R thing. See here in transmission line, return conductor to the earth is existed. Means there will be a formation of closed loop that one can say. So there will be return conductor to the earth 
in transmission line means there will be a formation of closed loop while in case of waveguide there is no such thing like return conductor exists here surface of waveguide that is acting like a earth and there will be reflection from the surface of that waveguide right so there is no such thing like return conductor because the body of waveguide act as a earth in waveguide right now i'll be discussing about next parameter that is bandwidth the transmission line bandwidth that is not limited it is purely based on impedance matching while waveguide bandwidth that is limited it is based on which mode that is there with given waveguide so based on mode operating frequency will be there and bandwidth is also limited over here you cannot have higher bandwidth over here with waveguide the reason is at higher bandwidth there will be signal dispersion to avoid signal dispersion bandwidth is limited over here with waveguide while with transmission line bandwidth is not limited bandwidth is limited based on impedance matching at load side right now next parameter that is attenuation in transmission line signal propagates based on coupling and as signal is propagating based on coupling you will be observing in between two parallel conductor there will be dielectric material and through that dielectric material there will be loss of signal so in transmission line there will be higher attenuation while in waveguide signal is propagating based on total internal reflection here total internal reflection will not attenuate signal as much as it is happening with transmission line right so initially when people were communicating at microwave frequencies at that time we were been using transmission lines but nowadays if you talk about satellites if you talk about microwave circuits so in that usually we use waveguides the reason is with waveguides we don't have that much attenuation right if you have proper waveguide in that case you can transfer signal based on total internal reflection through that waveguide where less attenuation is happening there are few more advantages which is there with waveguide like if you talk about power then power handling that is very high with waveguide while transmission line can handle low power only right so this transmission line that can handle low power only that one should know here i have not mentioned low power but it is handling only low power signals why the reason is if you increase the power then there can be dielectric breakdown the reason is in between two parallel conductor there will be dielectric material so if you increase the power then there is a possibility of dielectric breakdown that's why transmission line that can handle low power while waveguide can handle high power that is how basic comparison is there in between transmission line and waveguide i hope you have enjoyed this session still if anything that i would like to share just note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video